What is beyond our universe? That's one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. There are a few main theories about what could be beyond our universe. Today we will explore this through science and the Quran. We will see which of the theories presented by science are closest to the Quran. First of all, you have to understand the concept of the observable universe. The universe we see is just the observable universe, limited by the speed of light. Beyond that, more of the universe likely exists, but is too far for light to have reached us yet. This is the size of the observable universe, and it's very small when compared to the actual universe. In fact, if the cosmic inflation theory is correct, then the actual universe is 150 sextillion times bigger, or in other words, a distance of this many light years. For reference, just imagine if you were the size of the universe, but then realized that the actual universe is the size of the entire world. It's that much bigger. Some theories suggest that space goes on forever, with galaxies and matter continuing indefinitely. Is there anything beyond the universe? Probably not. Uh, we suspect quite strongly that, that our universe is, it could well be infinite in extent, even, even our bit of the universe, even notwithstanding what I just said about this eternal inflation stuff. If we just take our universe, it certainly, we're sure it exists far beyond the bit we can see. So why would I say that? Well, if you think about it, the universe, is the, our bit at least, has been around for 13.8 billion years. That means that light has only had 13.8 billion years to travel from the, from the bit that we can see to our eye. So we can only see as far as light has had time to travel. But we think there's a lot beyond that because of measurements we've made of how the universe is, is curved and what the structure of the universe is. So it undoubtedly extends beyond the little bubble that we can see. How far it extends, it's another great question. Uh, we don't know, but it could be infinite in extent. But this theory could not be correct. I will tell you why later. Moving to the next theory, some scientists believe in a multiverse, where our universe is just one of many. Parallel universes suggest that other versions of reality exist with different laws of physics. Brain universes are extra dimensions predicted by string theory where other universes could exist close to ours, but in a higher dimensional space. And some theories propose that beyond our universe is just a void, completely empty space with no matter, energy or even space-time. So science only tells us this much but the Quran tells us something that will leave you amazed. The Quran says in Surah Al-Mulk that he who created the seven heavens one above another, you do not see any in the creation of the most merciful any inconsistency. So return your vision, do you see any breaks? In Surah At-Talaq, the Quran says it is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth, the like of them. His command descends between them, so that you may know that Allah has power over all things and that Allah encompasses all things in knowledge. Now, from these verses we have come to know that there are seven heavens and seven earths. First let us look at the seven heavens and understand which heaven is the one we see. In Surah as safat Allah says, Indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with the beauty of the stars. This tells us that the sky we see is the first heaven. Wherever we see stars and galaxies that is all part of the first heaven. And we know, because we saw it at the beginning of the video, that we have only been able to observe a small part of our universe. We can never reach the boundary of this heaven because the universe is constantly expanding. No matter how fast we move, the universe keeps moving further away from us. Now, science cannot even take us to the actual limit of this one universe, but Allah tells us what is beyond this first heaven. Now what is between one heaven and the next? From a hadith we come to know that between every two heavens, there is water. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, between one heaven and the next is a distance of 500 years, and between each heaven there is a sea, the depth of which is also 500 years. This hadith tells us that vast water exists between the seven heavens, and the distance between them is immense. What kind of water it is we do not know, but we do know that there is water. Islamic narrations suggest that each successive heaven is vastly greater than the one below it. While there is no exact measurement given, a famous narration describes their immense difference in size. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The seven heavens compared to the kursi or footstool are like a ring thrown in a vast desert, and the kursi compared to the throne or arsh is like a ring thrown in a vast desert. Each higher heaven is much larger than the one below it. So this means the first heaven, which includes the observable universe and actual universe, is tiny compared to the second heaven. This pattern continues up to the seventh heaven, which is unimaginably vast. 
Above all of them is the Kursi, and beyond that is the Arsh, the throne of Allah, which is the greatest creation. Between each of the heavens there is a distance of 500 years in water. Now let's look at the seven earths and understand their reality. When Ibn Abbas was asked about the seven earths, he said, In every earth there is a prophet like your prophet Muhammad, an Adam like your Adam, a Noah like your Noah, an Abraham like your Abraham, and a Jesus like your Jesus. If Ibn Abbas's statement is taken in a broader sense, it might align with the idea that there are multiple Earth-like worlds beyond our perception, similar to the parallel universe concept in physics. A parallel universe, also called an alternate universe or multiverse, is the idea that beyond our universe, there are other universes that may have different versions of reality. These universes could have different physical laws, alternate histories, or even versions of ourselves living different lives. If we relate Islamic teachings with modern physics, it's possible that the heavens described in the Quran and Hadith are not just part of our observable universe, but parallel universes, each governed by different physical laws. If we consider the Hadith descriptions of the heavens that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him mentioned, it does seem like the different heavens have unique compositions and properties which could hint at different physical laws governing them. So concluding that our entire universe is like a tiny ring in an endless desert, compared to just the Kursi. And the Kursi itself is nothing compared to the Arsh, or throne of Allah. Now imagine, if this is just the size of the creation, then how great is the Creator? The Quran says, They have not appraised Allah with true appraisal, while the earth entirely will be within His grip on the day of resurrection, and the heavens will be folded in His right hand, exalted is He, and high above what they associate with Him. Quran 3967. Thanks for watching.